Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Tubby Time. Hope you're doing splendid. Splendid. It's a better word than doing well. Kayla just got home from work. We have a few hours before we have to go to bed. So we're going to watch a movie. And if it's not lot, it should be already that no movie is complete without a nice heaping bowl of popcorn. So we're going to show you today how to make the best movie theater style popcorn you'll ever have. Trust me. So, movie theater style popcorn. People make it, they screw it up, and they say, well, let's just go to the movie theater and get some. Or, even worse, let's go to, well, actually, I don't think it's worse, but let's go to the supermarket and buy the bagged crap that doesn't taste anything like movie theater style popcorn. Listen, don't buy the bag stuff, because it's terrible. It's, it's not even comparable to what we're going to do today. And trust me when I say this, unless you've made this before and you actually have this recipe and know what I'm saying and can predict the future, this is the best popcorn you're ever going to have. Now, obvious con, before we get into this, it does take like, what would you say, 10 minutes? Compared to 3 minutes and 30 seconds like your normal popcorn. But you're not going to spend $30 for a bag of it at a movie theater, and you're not going to spend $5 for a box of it at the supermarket. And it's not going to be burned if you put it in the And it's not going to be burned. You know how that happens all the time. And then your life's ruined. It's not going to get soggy. Or half, right, half the kernels. We have a whole list. Let's just get into this. So, people always get overwhelmed when you say, I'm going to make some popcorn at home on the stovetop. People are just, it blows their mind. I don't know why. Because it's very simple. You only need seven items. Seven things. That's it. First of which is your popcorn. Yes, I have a bag of popcorn. I actually have three bags of unpopped kernels. And the reason they're in bags... I shouldn't have done that because that almost ripped open. But the reason they're in bags is because I buy in bulk. I get a 50-something pound bag of popcorn off Amazon. And I'll post links for all this stuff, by the way. And it lasts me forever. How long have I had this bag of popcorn? There are, it's, been it's been a while. So you buy in bulk off Amazon, you're going to have a really good deal. And this is really good quality stuff. It's lasted me, I think, at least three years. And I still have plenty more to go. The reason I have it in these bags is because some oil soaked into the bag and got the popcorn kernels all messy. So I had to clean those off. That was fun. Now you could just go to the supermarket and buy the Orville Redenbacher kernels. That's fine if you don't like ordering off Amazon or you don't like shopping online. It is 2020. But those are very expensive. I mean, Orville Redenbacher is a great brand. It was what I started off with. But after buying like three of them, I decided I should do my research a little bit and actually get some good kernels. And I, these are just as good, I think. They pop. There's not a lot of kernels at the bottom, so they work great, and they're much cheaper. Next thing you're going to need is a bowl. I got this bowl at, what is this, an eight-quart or something? Six, six or eight-quart bowl. It, it's big. It's thick, and it holds almost a cup of, a cup? Yeah, well, yeah, almost a cup of popcorn that's unpopped. You know, once it, I don't know how you measure popped popcorn, but a cup of popcorn will fit in this bowl. It'll be tight, but it'll fit. And the reason you want a big bowl like that is so you can toss your ingredients around afterwards. Next, you're going to need a measuring cup. I have a quarter cup here, but a half cup will do. That's usually what I make is a minimum half cup of popcorn. Then you're going to need something to cook it in. A pot will do. This is our big pot. This holds seven liters. You can use something smaller than this. It doesn't have to be this big. But a pot and a cover, if you have a vented cover... That works even better because if you're going to use a pot, what happens is you put the cover on and when the popcorn starts popping, it gets very soggy. So you have to sort of finagle it to have your arm opening the lid or the lid off to the side a little bit. So a pot will do. It's just somewhat of a pain. You can use tin foil on top, something like that, so it does vent now a little bit. But the thing we use in this house is our Whirly Pop, the genuine Whirly Pop, I should add. This thing is absolutely astounding. In my opinion, this is the only way to cook popcorn. Like, just use this. It's like 20 bucks, 25 bucks on Amazon. Once again, I'll put a link. It works wonders. And it's very simple. Your popcorn goes in here, and then inside you got this little thing that stirs it around when the oil's in there. It's just a little hand crank thing. Makes the popcorn pop very easy. 
You don't have to use a spatula or stir it around with your hand, and it's done in no time, really. The only con with this that I have is it gets a little dirty and somewhat hard to clean sometimes. And this lid, when it heats up, the metal sort of does weird stuff, science, I don't know. And sometimes when you're dumping the popcorn, it gets a little loose and scares me. So, something to keep in mind. Our last two things we need, obviously, one of them is oil. Oh, I miscounted, I think. I think we need three more things. We need oil. Now, any oil will do. Most people use coconut oil for genuine movie theater popcorn, especially if you're making kettle corn or something like that. I prefer a nice big bottle of corn oil. This is just Wesson Pure Corn Oil. I keep it in this little spray bottle. And like I said, you can use any type of oil, really. Some people I know use olive oil, vegetable oil, canola oil is another popular one. I prefer canola or corn. That's just me. It's a little healthier than using coconut oil. And it's less expensive. The next thing you'll need for your popcorn to be genuinely a movie theater style popcorn is butter. Now this ain't any old butter, okay? This is Great Northern popcorn movie theater buttery topping. This stuff also available on Amazon. It is peanut free in case you were wondering. It has no eggs, no milk, no peanuts, no wheat, no tree nuts, and no MSG. This stuff is as close to what I can find to the stuff that you pump onto your corn at the movie theater. And we just spritz it on afterwards. Cool thing is you can use it as an oil to cook your popcorn in. I've never done that. I'm sort of scared to because I'm not a huge butter person, but I, I do like to put a good amount on. I just don't really want to cook it in it. We should, we'll try that sometimes. But this stuff is great. If you just, it, like if I were to just squirt some in my mouth right now, it doesn't really taste like much. It tastes like oil. But once it absorbs into the popcorn, it's got that buttery flavor that you're looking for. And it's pretty thick too. And the last thing you'll need for this whole process is the creme de la creme, the thing that makes movie theater style popcorn, movie theater style popcorn. And that is this stuff, Flavacol. Also, which is really cool, available on Amazon. And you get two of them for like 11 bucks. I've had this box of this for like carton, I guess you, if you will, for three years at least. And it's about down to there. I eat a lot of popcorn, but I have some of this at work. I have some of this here. This is basically salt, but it's finely ground salt. And you'll see when we put it on the popcorn afterwards, how finely ground it is. And it's orange. So it gives a little bit of color to your corn. It smells like nothing. It's, it's great stuff. And if you really want the genuine taste of movie theater popcorn, you need to get this stuff. You will not be disappointed. A lot of times people will go wrong by putting just regular old table salt on their popcorn. And the problem is table salt, in my experience, always goes to the bottom. It, it doesn't stick to the corn, especially if you're air popping it. It's not just going to sink to the bottom when you toss it and you're not going to enjoy yourself. Now you can finely grind table salt if you wish or sea salt or something like that. It's just, this stuff is so good. It's like, a, it's like flour, but a little heavier. So that's all we need. Let's get into making the popcorn. All right, we're going to throw this bad boy on our stovetop and we'll put it on a medium heat. Medium to medium high is usually best. I prefer medium, a little over medium. Right off the bat, we're going to take our corn oil and throw some of this in and let that sort of soak down a little bit. Now, when I cook popcorn, I do not do measurements except for the actual popcorn itself because this will only hold a half cup popped. So I sort of just put enough oil, eyeball it, so when the kernels go in there, they actually are in like a little cocoon of oil. If you want to be technical, you can start with like a, a quarter. I don't remember what I used to use, actually. <laughs> I just eyeball it. So just eyeball it and see when you put your kernels in, if you need more, you'll get a good feeling for it once you do it a few times. So this is going to take about, uh, I would say, two minutes to heat up before I add some kernels just to test it. I'll just move it around a little bit, see if it's getting liquidy and less thick. Damn boy. And with this particular thing, I'm just looking to see if it's on the edges. I'm going to add a little bit more. Just that much. I don't want to make popcorn that's really, really oily. Next, I'm going to take my bowl. I'm going to just measure out my half cup of popcorn. Like I said, that's all we're going to be able to hold here. Remember, this is a quarter cup, so that's why I did two. All right, we're at a good starting point, so I'm going to throw in three kernels. This is the most patient 
part right here. You just got to wait for them to do their thing and pop. And the reason we do that is because if we just throw these in right now, the liquid's not hot enough. The liquid. The oil's not hot enough. And we're going to drop the temp a bit. We don't want that to happen. We just want to have them go in, quickly pop, get them out. It'll be hot. It'll be nice. We don't, we don't want our kernels to just be sitting there on the bottom. The bottom one's popping and the top one's slowly sort of getting there. That's how you get unpopped kernels. Then give this a little spin just to get those kernels moving a little bit so they don't burn on one side. And we're just waiting for them to pop. As soon as they pop, we throw in our popcorn. I just want to show you guys how much oil we're working with. If I tilt this up, there we go. That's how much we got. Not too much, but not too little. My sales will go up as much as 25% once I treat my popcorn as the specialty of the house. Have we been selling more popcorn? I don't think so. Ooh, we got one. So there's some debate on whether you put this Flavacol stuff in the oil while the popcorn's popping or you put it on afterwards. I'm here to tell you that I'm not really sure, but I prefer it being put on afterwards. You use less if you put it on in the oil, but I sort of like salty popcorn. So I've noticed that a lot of it, if you use it in the oil, it'll stick to the bottom and it's sort of just wasted because it gets on the popcorn and then sticks to the sides of the, the hot whirly pop. If you put it on afterwards, yeah, some sticks to the bowl, but it mostly gets on the popcorn. Good to go. Open this up, don't touch that, and we throw it in. As you can see, it's all on one side. We're gonna mix it up. So I'll show you what happens when I mix it. It just goes like that. All that oil coats it. And as you can see, hopefully, those pop kernels are staying on top. That's the cool thing about this, because we don't want the pop kernels to stay on the bottom, otherwise they're gonna get burned. So this constantly moves them around. So what I do is I stand here for about two minutes, waiting for this to pop. Just going at this pace. Don't wanna go that fast. We're at the point now where we are popping, very slowly but surely. And now what's gonna happen is all of it's gonna just pop at once. You're gonna hear it. It's gonna be amazing. Maybe you can see it on the camera, but you have some vents here where the steam's coming out as the corn pops, and it's very important. If I had a regular lid, it wouldn't work. Oh God, go, 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 go. I'm just gonna shake it up a little bit just to make sure some of that stuff gets incorporated in the middle. Oh yeah, look at that. We're almost there. We'll shake it up. That was very quick. That was like 30 seconds. And we are good to go. Same rule as if you're doing it on the microwave. If you hear no popping for about three seconds, you're good. Sweet. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is your popcorn. So let's make the magic happen now. All right, so I got my bottle of oil, or not oil, butter. It says corn, because I used to keep corn oil in here. So I'm just gonna lightly go around the top here. And then every time I do something, I'm gonna shake it up. And this is why we need the large bowl. Let me get it all evenly coated. I know I said this bowl can hold a little more than uh, this. It can hold a cup. But doing this, when you're tossing it like this, gets a little ridiculous, so. I like to keep it, I like to keep it to like a half to three quarters of a cup of pop popcorn. And that's about as much oil as I want. I'll do a little more. This stuff, uh, it's not gonna evenly distribute all the way, but, and you can hear, we have like barely any pop kernels, or barely any unpopped kernels, I should say. <laughs> now the Flavacol, it has directions on here if you were gonna use it for oil, but if you're just gonna top it, I just do it by eye, basically. So I just do a sprinkle on the top and watch how thin it is when it comes out. It's like a little, it's a powder, it's so cute. And the nice thing about this is you really, I don't think I've ever overdone it. Have I ever overdone it? Maybe once. Yeah, like I, I, don't, I don't think I really overdo it. 
Kayla doesn't like salty popcorn. She likes buttery popcorn. I'm a salt guy. And you can actually use the flavor call without the butter. I think it would be fine, but I need I like sort of having a binder. I just do a quick taste test. One more. And that should be good. All right, let's try it out. Grab a handful. What are you doing? Oh my god. Hmm. Better in the movie theater. By Way far. Way better than microwave. Am. It's cheaper. Can you imagine what this would be at a movie theater? This bowl? Like $10. Oh my god. You're talking your paycheck. That's a car payment. This bowl popcorn at a movie theater. No. All right. That's enough. Make it at home. It's so much better. We're going to go be fat. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Stay tubby. What the hell?